you you work with fine leathers on the inside you, you put polished aluminium bases on there and, and it's it's got a classic kind of tone to it it's it's executive um but then by the same kind of rationale you you can you know you can appeal to to younger designers who are looking for something that's just out and out modern you can start throwing color at this you know whether it's color blocking or it's contrasting or it's you know starting to, to play with with different textures and tones and um it's surprisingly a, a product that feels and and looks just as happy in in both extremes of of, of that kind of dressing exercise so yeah i don't think we've we've really pulled a product through since cruise that, that so comfortably uh, works at both ends of that spectrum the, the second thing that's that's definitely worth kind of you know reminding the, those that you're presenting uh, to is is this kind of you know it is a true family of products you know there's other there's other families of products out there of course i'm not going to try and kid you that there's not um but usually when you try and follow a single line a single kind of um, aesthetic concept through multiple pieces of furniture within a single collection some of those pieces end up looking very compromised it looks like you you, you forced the issue slightly and again maybe this comes down to the diligence of the of the development and the you know the, the ongoing refinement through prototyping but you know cruise is one of very few families of products on the market where you can accommodate all three of the uh, the regular traditional kind of seat heights for different environments from lounge seating to be used in conjunction with coffee tables through to of course the the meeting room and, and touchdown workplace through to, to high stalls in either hospitality or workplace environments and none of the products look compromised none of them look like they, that we've stretched it too far in order to to try and deliver that family feel you know we, we're in a we're in a marketplace at the moment where from an interior design perspective uh there's, there's a, a large section of the market who want to put eclectic looking environments together and so for those people having a kind of you know, having a, a true family feel is maybe not so important, but at the same time, for every interior designer that I speak to, or every end user as well that I speak to who, who wants to go down a very eclectic route, there were just as many who seem to want a, a common thread to feed through, if not all, then at least parts of their projects. And therefore, to be able to sell crews as a, as a true family that accommodates those, those three typical settings and uses is, is a really strong point. Now, of course, keeping crews relevant, continuing to, to grow sales on crews over the, the course of the last few years is, is, you know, remains top of our, our list of priorities. So, you know, the original chair that you see in the middle there, which was on the cast aluminium four-star base, has, you know, has literally grown, grown legs, um, you know, in order to make sure that we can capitalize on the need for interior design uh, to, to be able to put timber legged products in, you know, that ongoing kind of softening and domestication of the workplace. You know, we, we can do that now. The, the fact that the, aesthetic around uh, you know, touchdown work chairs which need a tilt mechanism and height adjustment and mobility you know that's a, it's a fast growing market and so to be able to put the top section of crews across onto a, a number of different five star bases and give it those extra levels of functionality again without making it look compromised that's been an important part of continuing to grow this and then things like the you know the entry level seal and uh four leg and sled frames you know which you, you can throw all sorts of interesting paint finishes at and, and really use those uh use those components to, to give you impact through color on, on any enduring scheme so you can mix bases on the same project and importantly of course as you see there on the chair on the right we, we encourage uh, those who are buying the product to, to mix different colors and textures from the inside to the outside or from the seat components to the back components on here uh, 
you know, as a hotel bedroom chair. We we found this has sold really well over the over the, the last three or four years that we've been selling it in that guise. And then, of course, over the last few years, uh, hospitality has always been an outlet for this product, but. Uh, workplace projects that are using high tables whether they're kind of high bench meeting tables or this kind of smaller one-to-one -one setting but actually numbers on the cruise stalls at, at both uh, as you call counter and, and bar height um, are increasing year on year and then the lounge chair came along so you know, simple proposition, but high level of comfort, much thicker foams, you know, Dacron wrapped. And this is, is something that you can, you know, it's not truly domestic in its in its comfort, you know, it holds a line for the, for the contract of the workplace. But again, you can deliver really quite a, an executive uh, look off the back of this, as well as something that's altogether much cleaner and uh, modern. The lounge chair coming as both a high and a low back, which was uh, important for us. So, of the visuals that we're spinning through at the moment, this is uh, part of a um, the, the you know trying to to invigorate the marketing around cruise over the last few months. Um, whilst numbers on cruise have, have grown pretty much every single year that it's been in the market, we we're still relying on, on a lot of photography and a lot of imagery that had actually you know, been generated at the time when we launched it and a lot of it had not been updated since. So the work that Kerry's done with his team in, in trying to, you know, to put more modern imagery together, make sure that the, the finishes that we're showing it in represent the, you know, the colors that are available within the BOSS portfolio right now and that the fabrics represent those which you know, we, we seeing uh, specified regularly in the market this uh, again just helps to make it look like this is uh, this is a product that's absolutely you know in, enjoying the time of its life at the moment so i guess uh, you know an overview of cruise there i'm, I'm sure I miss loads and, and would, would take some questions uh, well do you want to do questions now carry on cruise or do you want me to it go through DNA and then we come back to. I think um, uh, if we kind of we can plow on. I don't think we've got too many questions at this stage. So feel free to uh, to pop those questions in the Q and A uh, as they pop on up. But um, yeah, let's let's plow on and we'll we'll have a little session at the end to to go through questions. Right, good stuff. Like you two have got to be the judge of this because if this just turns into a monologue, then you know we're um, we, we're going to have to. You got your. You sound great, Mark. What can I say? Okay, Mark, we'll, Mark is uh, just while we're there on cruise, worth noting that we have put cruise lounge in the four week program. So okay. in well in worth noting, wood, yeah, you know, in both wood shells, in in a black yeah. and a brown leather, in high end mid back. So you know, we we still see a lot of potential for crews uh, uh, particularly in the lounge here in the market so we've invested in material to support that here as well good stuff okay so we'll move on next to uh, to dna so uh, the last time i saw most of you would have been at neocon 2019 where we just completed the development of, of this product range um, since then, it's gone on to be sold on a number of nice projects through the US and, and actually now is a, is a really important uh, part of our upholstery portfolio. Um, and it's really, you know, as its, as its name suggests, this was, you know, this was about us making a, a commitment not to, not to try and, and be something that we that we weren't or, or not not to ever try and kind of turn our back on what's made us successful and, and I believe we'll, we'll continue to make us successful and, and ultimately we're an upholstery business you know it's it's in our hearts it's what really gets us quite excited about going to work each day you know upholstery has has taught us the, the meaning and the value of, of detail, of, of comfort, and of fine tailoring. And, and 
everything that we've done since, everything that we spread our wings to, whether it's a kind of an Ola or a Saint plastic shell, or it's a Trinetic type task chair, or, you know, even down to the kind of the office pods that we do, um, you know, we've learned our trade through upholstery. And so the detail that we apply to all of those, uh, all of those other disciplines is, is derived from this. And when you've got uh, a product which is, you know, a plastic shell or a cast aluminium type skeleton like it is on, on an Ola or a Trinetic, and it has minimal upholstery on it, but still that upholstery that you see on, even if it's just a seat pad on a, on a task chair on the Trinetic, the, the quality that we're able to produce and the, and the detail that we build into those elements still goes above and beyond 99% of those that we're competing. So, you know, no matter how sophisticated this, this market becomes, uh, and it, it continues to change rapidly, but you know, no matter how many new typologies that the, the market sees and, and you know the expectation for, for boss design to stay at the forefront of that you know we, we still believe we still see you know every every week every month with the kind of projects that, that come through the office that almost every project still ultimately has a requirement for just really lovely you know beautifully tailored beautifully refined shapes on armchairs, sofas, and, and lounge seating. And we don't see that changing. You know, so every year, of, of course, we will continue to invest in plastics on things like Ola and Stain. We'll continue to invest in task seating and, and sophisticated meeting chairs or things like Coza and Trinetic. And we'll continue to spread our wings into things like, you know, the, the upper markets of the, um, the desking side and, and office pods. But still, every year that goes by, we will continue to bring through at least one new range of just really lovely upholstery. Now, uh, DNA um, was a project that we took on at the same time as uh, bidding for a new contract with British Airways for their, their global uh, first and business class lounges. And they were looking to, to get in a kind of a ground level on, on a new piece of upholstery. And when we started showing them the, the sketch concepts that we had for, for DNA, this, this really appealed to them. You know, we were looking back into our past at things like the, the Delphi chair, which is, you know, 40 years old uh, next year since the concept was first sketched out. You know, with this upholstery that kind of wraps up and over uh, over the backrest and, and a full sprung seat and back form on that, you know, and, and wondering whether we can we could take that into something that was actually a kind of a, a full lounge chair dimension. And so DNA was uh, was born again in terms of you know, heavy duty prototyping. We 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 didn't skimp. We've got a really highly skilled development team of upholsterers uh, here in, in the Dudley factories in the UK. And I lost count of the amount of times that we we remachined you know blue foam models. You know each one just you know two three four mil quarter inch different to the one before, but just going round and round that loop in order to try and find the, the sweet spots required in order to to balance comfort with durability and to be able to balance ergonomics with with the aesthetic uh, criteria that we're looking for. So. The chair that you see on the left uh, is the group standard product that goes through all of the, the BA Global Lounges. They've, they've bought, we're coming up to a thousand of these now over the course of the last uh, 16 months, 17 months. Um, and it's doing a sterling job. Um, looks great in the leathers that they put it in, as well as the much softer, more highly textured fabrics. And, you know, the, the sprung seat preform, as well as that kind of hidden uh, coil mattress spring that we've got underneath the foam backrest, you know, means that uh, everyone seems pretty happy in there when I want to sit in the lounges. Um, but for us, that 
if we'd only gone with with that kind of tub chair appeal it would have only captured a part of, of the potential market that we needed so naturally we laid down uh, another series of tooling that allowed us to do the shorter version here that you see towards the right hand side of this page so you know every project now is looking at this kind of lounge seating on a, on a swivel base and using the same base that we've used on that cruise lounge chair of course was quite an easy way again to, to sweep that in and across polished or or painted looks pretty good on both again the the wooden foreleg there was going to be an important part of picking up on the, on the kind of uh, hotel lounge, hotel lobby seating, and even moving into the bedrooms that we'd get access to. Um, but importantly, we just didn't want something that was kind of too too straight legged. We want something that was, was a very dynamic four leg chair. So that's when we started to play with with using the metal subframe to give us enough strength through those wooden legs in order to support the quite extreme angles at which they meet the ground. And then finally, over on the right hand side, it's the, it's the entry level as far as price pointing is concerned. And um, it's perhaps the, the most modern, maybe the most fun version of this. Color thrown easily at the skid frame, and uh, it's, it's one that the interior designers on the projects I'm working on in, in London at the moment is the, the one that maybe they seem to be having the most fun with. Um, as with all of the products that we'll talk about, you know. Anywhere there's a there's a seam, there's an opportunity to uh, change the fabric or the the texture or the colour that you're working with, and and this kind of guys is one that we've seen regularly where people have put nice, soft, heavily textured fabrics onto the internal where people are touching and sitting, but then they've either put a leather or a vinyl wrap around the outside of the chair. Um, you know, it gives you an opportunity to, to play with cost points as well as, well as playing with, with uh, visuals here. You can put expensive bits of fabric on, on the bits that are most important to your end user. You can use the cheaper fabrics on, on the bit that, uh, that you don't necessarily get to touch. Um, the other way of dressing this up is usually to upholster the whole body. Uh, so the inside and the outside of that body in one particular fabric and then do the seat and the backrest wrap over in an alternative. So a lot of what Kerry's working on at the moment is about presenting our contract products in a much more domestic setting. Um, you know, especially with the market as it is at the moment, us, us moving into selling furniture into domestic settings is going to be something that we're looking at. Certainly from a home working perspective, it's, it's very high on our, our agenda at the moment. But as well as that, the, you know, the, the call for us to present workplace furniture that's going to be specified for workplaces in softer, more, more residential type settings is, is important. So shoots like this on, on the right hand side of your page now, uh, we can start to have, have some real fun with. So top stitch that you see running around the, the perimeter edge of that, coupled with a pinch stitch that you see running around the edge of the back cushion, coupled with the twin stitch that you see running around the seat. Um, there's there's a lot of a lot of different disciplines that go into this uh, this chair, but again, uh, just a nice example of of our core competence. I feel you know just something as simple as cutting, sewing, and pulling an upholstered cover onto a molded foam shape, which sounds so easy, but there's very, very few companies that we're competing with who do it very well. You know, given, given enough of a budget, you know, there's a lot of companies that can, can move into to plastics and task chairs and do a cracking job. But time after time, we see that no matter how much money some of the, the really big players throw at upholstery, they, they still just never quite achieve the level of competence and the level of skill that we are. And whilst I'm not going to sit here and tell you that we're the, we're the best upholstery business in, in the world, certainly what I'm absolutely sure about is that you have to spend a lot more money 
to buy something that's of better quality that, than we can offer. So it's our roots, it's our DNA, and it's something that we're going to talk a lot about over the, the course of the coming weeks when we apply that to other products. And that's enough, I think. Okay, so before we go on to um, our, the rest of our offering, then we've got one question from, uh, from Daniel, and he just wants us to point out some of the, um, the quality upholstery details that contrast with uh, maybe some lesser quality products out there. So where does where do our product details excel? So um, so for me still the uh, the easiest way to see where a company is with regard to its upholstery skill is whether they can sew a straight line. So when you see something as simple as a, a kind of a box arm sofa. You know, there are, there are box arm sofas out there from $1,000 to, you know, $20,000. Um, but some companies can sew and some companies can't, or rather some companies put a high level of diligence and quality control into their sewing and some don't. So just something as simple as being able to sew a straight line is, is an important marker. But then you look at something like DNA, you know, there's no straight lines on this chair. It's very organic. But... Go back to this, you know, the, the ability for a company to tailor a product so that the sewing line sits perfectly on the perimeter edge of a product. Again, like so, so many companies will photograph the best example that they've got, but the stuff that you see that's actually delivered on the project day to day doesn't necessarily represent the same level. And fortunately for us, a lot of the samples that get submitted for, for presentations during the decision-making process on projects often, often aren't of, of the same sort of level. So, you know, that, that's important. And this is where it comes back to this, you know, I, I talk about tailoring, which is essentially about pulling a cover onto a shape. But the tailoring, before tailoring comes patterning. Okay, so so patterns, uh, whether they're cut from CNC machines or, or they're cut with a more traditional manner with kind of, you know, Stanley knives around templates. Um, all of the individual panels of a product like this are cut separately and then obviously they're sewn together. But importantly, every single fabric and, uh, you know, every single leather and then the inconsistency of leather being what it is, almost every single hide of leather will act slightly differently. They all stretch uh, by a different amount. They, they stretch in a slightly different direction. And a lot of companies, you know, even good quality companies that I, I could name drop for you have, have a set of fabric patterns, a set of vinyl patterns and a set of leather patterns. And then they get an order for any one of 30, 40, 50 fabrics and they cut using that set of patterns. And that means that inevitably on some, you're gonna pull the bags on and they're gonna be tight as hell and they're gonna be squeezing all the foam and your, your seams are gonna be kind of trying to drift inwards and the upholsterers have to pull the life out of it to tack it off. And on others, they're gonna be baggy. You're gonna be able to run your hand around the internal of a, of a shape on a tub chair or a, across a sofa cushion. And you'll be able to gather fabric in your hand, the excess fabric as it, as it comes across. So, uh, I'm kind of proud, but it sounds a bit mental to tell you that we, we have 12 sets of, of fabric patterns as a minimum for every one of our top chair products, like a Manta or a DNA. You know, for, for these where you're sewing a bag and then you're relying on a full fitted bag that pulls on top to bottom, 12 sets of, sets of patterns, in our opinion, is the minimum that you need in order to make sure that every product that goes out the door looks like it's perfectly fitted. And we still make adjustments to those on a day-to-day on -a -day basis with just a millimeter here or there, just to take it in or out. But you know, this is going to draw attention as much as possible to those chairs that are in the lineup with us from other manufacturers, where you, you can see there's, there's a bit of bag in there and, you know, Go, go and pull it, go and, go and grab the excess uh, fabric on that or draw attention to the fact that the seam is creeping. Um, it's, it's really, it's basic stuff, but it's a, it's a diligence and it's a competence that runs through the heart of our business, which is, is simply absent in, in most of the competitors that we, um, we find ourselves going up against. That was a long and passionate response on that. Good effort, I like that response. That was... <laughs> I love the passion, yeah. Yeah, Grant, uh, Grant wants to know about, um, well, 
wondering if we can talk a bit more in depth about um, the detail that we kind of go through. And um, as luck would have it, we've made a little video uh, on in our insight section. We're interviewing one of our development upholsterers, uh, Steve Bloomer. Uh, and we talk about the, the lens that we go through and the, the care and the attention, the detail that, that Mark's just alluding to, not just with Mark, but that just permeates through the entire uh, business from the shop floor to the design team to, to, to everyone. So if you do go onto the uh, Designer Insights, there's a, a little four minute video there called um, uh, kind of refined upholstery. And you can see the processes that we go through um, there. And, and if you... Yes. And the, the DNA Insight video is the one with Steve Bloom, one of our development upholsterers, and, and Rich Jones, who was involved in the design of this. But yeah, we're, we're a prototype heavy business. Um, we, we drive, you know, ourselves mad at, at times, but, you know, the, the, I suppose the worst thing about us is we're, we're often late in, in developing product. Uh, the, the dates that we set to hit for full production, I'm afraid, are, are often are often missed. Um, and sometimes I'm apologetic about that, and sometimes I'm not, because ultimately we're putting products out there which we want to have a sales opportunity of not just the next five years or ten years, but like crews building through through twenty years, and and hopefully you know in fifty years time, if if boss is still trading and Obviously, we won't be here, but uh, I hope the products will be. Um, and so my view is usually that for the sake of, of a few more iterations on the prototyping and the extension of a project timeline by a few weeks, you, you're still potentially making the difference between something that hits the mark and, and you know feels as refined and as balanced as it needs to, to have that longevity in the market or something that actually feels a little rushed and, and maybe a little compromised. Okay, thanks, Mark. If anyone has any other questions, feel free to ask or we'll just move on Kerry, to- Kerry, I'm, I'm gonna ask the group a question. I was just asking Deontra, we, you're absolutely right. We have some really good videos there, which are, I'm wondering for the guys here in the US, would we have a better, you know, would they want us to upload a YouTube channel so it's more accessible when they're out perhaps you know if a designer is saying well tell me about the detail they can pull up their phone go on youtube pull, pull down that video and show it or you know a, a message a question for the group if they want to answer it in the uh, chat is, is there a better i've already got one of uh, yes please from ainsley so yeah maybe uh, we'll look at um how we can set those up we, we know there's uh, instagram tv there's obviously um also, um, YouTube. There's another one. There's another one. Okay, that that seems like uh, we currently like all the videos are on uh, Vimeo at the moment. But obviously, we can certainly get them across to uh, to YouTube too. So we've got a Vimeo channel where all of our videos kind of live. Okay. So probably we probably locally need to do a better job in sharing that link as well, Carrie. We'll we'll take a look at that from here. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Let's go scoot on. So that does lead us into the product insight videos that we've uh, that we've got and made, where you can see uh, the design journeys that we've been on with the designers and with the development team. Um, like we said, with the DNA, it was a, a joint project between uh, Sir Rich Jones and uh, and the sort of Steve. Yeah. Steve. Um, and they, they, you know, they really kind of brought both their skill sets together, and you can find out all about that uh, in the uh, the resource videos there on the on the website. And then we've got uh, our box uh, resource library, which is managed and maintained by the lovely Dionche. Um and it's got everything you should possibly need in there, from the images to the videos to presentations, templates that you can kind of get your hands on and use. So, two um, D and three D files as well. So, if there's anything else that you need. Well, if there's anything you need, it should be in there. And if there's anything that you don't need, please do get in touch. Okay. Yeah, we are, we are constantly working on box and adding <coughs> bits and pieces in and, and, and tidying things up. I think that's a sort of daily task. And, and we do see that it's get gaining in its um, use. Um, I see, Mr. Murphy, you've been hammering the hell out of it this morning, which is great, great news to see. So 
just having that availability of material, I think, is is helping us a lot on this kind of thing. And um, we'll, we'll do more videos as well when Kerry and I can finally get together again. <laughs> In the yeah. garden, six foot apart. Well, yeah, well. I've got a few more designers lined up as well, so um, we should get it. Yeah. And I've uh, got a few more jumpers for you, Mark, so we can... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we've got to keep the jumpers turning, yeah. Uh, that, that, that could be the series, um, Mark in the Garden. <laughs> garden gar the Garden Lectures, that's what we'll have. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Very English. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So we covered off that uh, interactive showroom. I think it's just worth another, worth another prompt. Absolutely, yeah. So on the, uh, on the uh, websites, we've got our interactive showroom, the London showroom. So we're using the, the Matterport uh, software to explore our London showroom. Um, as you can see, all the touch points on the, uh, the experience should have a full product uh, list and detailing there. And if there's any videos, you should be able to delve into those from that point as well. So hopefully have the full interactive London tour experience from the comfort of wherever you'd be sitting. Just to carry on, on that for Chicago for the guys here, obviously we, we stripped out Chicago ready for Neocon, which um, we now all would have been recovering from. Um, and um, what we are doing is we will temporarily reinstate the showroom. Daniel's been working on some stuff around that. And then um, I think we'll do a sort of soft informal relaunch once we're we're able to travel again but we certainly will have the showroom probably up and accessible by the end of this month if there's anyone brave enough to travel to um downtown chicago sounds great oh, i'm still in mourning about neocon you know <laughs> I, I love that neocon week this is a, this is a nightmare situation <laughs> We've been having Mike has sent me a message almost every day. We would have been there now. <laughs> we would, yeah, yeah. We'd, it would have been getting really exciting now. The judges would have been coming round and everything. It would have been cool. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Such is life. Okay. Cool. Okay. I think. Cool. Is anything else come through on the chat? Uh, no. no yep. Pleased to see a bit of uh, some more videos and some. Bit of YouTube. Good stuff. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Well, we'll um, we'll do the same time next week if that works for everyone else. Thanks for thanks for coming. We'll send out uh, invites over the next uh, couple of days.